Yeah, my name is Peter Sentner, and I'm here with South Congregational Church from Kenny Bunport, Maine. Well, I was trying to remember that, to be honest with you. I think I've been here, um, this will be my fifth trip down okay. to Back Bay, yeah. Yeah, um, well, at the time, I, our Minister Emeritus, uh, Charlie Whiston, um, led these trips, and he was just very enthusiastic about it. And I thought it would be a great opportunity to do service and, and see another part of the country I've never seen uh, and experience a, another culture and, uh, and do the kind of work that uh, happens here at Back Bay Mission. Uh, I'm a social worker by background and profession, so helping, helping out is sort of in my blood. And uh, this was, seemed like a great opportunity. I like to be hands-on and all that sort of thing. My, my work was very kind of cerebral, you know, in an office, uh, in front of a computer, working and seeing people and stuff like that. So having an opportunity to to uh, use my hands was really uh, attractive to us. Yeah. Well, yeah. Um, I, I came down with my granddaughter, and and she is biracial and Don't identifies her. as an African American yeah. woman. Don't show her out there. She's a woman She's now. Back then, she was a girl. You didn't go across um, the street, right? That's and okay. uh, we walked down to the visitor center yeah, and we saw the flag the she uh, recognized the confederate he, symbol he, on the flag he, but she didn't really understand what it meant it and she said papa look at that there's a confederate yeah, symbol on their yeah. flag why is that there what does what that mean that? and uh and that really you know gave us the opportunity to have some pretty difficult conversations because you know here she is a black girl at that point in time and you know talking with her about slavery and the civil war and, and what that means and all that kind of stuff but I, I scratched my head and said why in the heck would that be on the flag and I did some research on that and found out that you know not not too soon before that there was actually a referendum on that and it was voted to keep it and I said wow that really kind of blew my mind that was definitely a welcome to Mississippi moment, I imagine. Yeah. And you mentioned the referendum. I can remember two in my lifetime. So they did one, I think roughly 2001, year 2000, they did one. And it was overwhelmingly voted. I think like 80% of the state voted to keep the flag. Yeah. And they did another one, I think, uh, in the mid-2010s. Mid, uh, okay. And then they passed again. And they did a third one recently, and they finally decided to change the flag. So I'm sure you've seen the new flag since that removed the Confederate battle yeah, flag. Yeah, and that's... that's Definitely a step forward, but you know, I knew I'd stepped into a different culture when I, when, you know, when you say what what uh, what was my first experience here, what was that like, and that's one of the things I, I really remember. Um, one of the things that I really appreciate about sort of the Southern culture is how friendly people are and how welcoming and, and uh, that sort of thing. Just in kind of day-to-day -day, uh, discourse with people. Very much, the pace is much slower. Yeah, people yeah. kind of when they when they ask how are you doing, they'll they'll really stop and talk to you about it if you want to talk to them. It's like we're we're in Mississippi now. Yeah, like it's you take the good with the bad, but it's it's right there in your face. Well, I live in Maine, and we had uh, an incident in our public local high school, and <clears throat> involved uh, two young guys, you know, 16, 17 years old, something like that. And one fellow uh, was easily kind of swayed and influenced and things like that. And the other guy was sort of, I think he's really the one that came up with the idea. And, and he, this, the one fellow that wasn't really quite with it, came into the room uh, of a teacher who was African American. And he had, he was wearing the Confederate flag and he kind of ran around the room with this Confederate flag on, while the other guy, who was kind of mastermind of the whole thing, took a video of it and you know put it out on social media and stuff like that. And uh, it was a terrible situation. Uh, the teacher wound up leaving. Uh, she took it to the Maine Human Rights Commission, and you know it was a big, big deal. Um, and uh, it, it caused quite an uproar in our, in our community. And Maine is primarily a white state, you know, and we have more people of color who are new immigrants coming from Africa and other countries like that that are migrating here. And, and uh, 
and are in refugee status and things like that. Um, so that symbol, it's not just the South where it's happening, it's happening in the North as well. And you see it, you know. Uh, and and it's, it's really, uh, it's part of this polarization that's going on in our country. And it's, it's really, race seems to be the issue. I think if you really unwrap all this stuff, it kind of boils down to fear. You know, the, the, the white majority is fearful that they're going to be the white minority. And that's, that's, you know, that's where we're headed. That's, that is the reality. Statistically, that is very Statistically, true. Statistically, that's what's going to happen here. But, you know, it's, it's, this country has been founded on, you know, being a white Christian, uh, you know, uh, country. So if, if we lose that identity, then, you know, I think there's a, a great number of people that, that really are bothered by that, really. And they, they're fearful that they're going to kind of lose what they have. So it comes down to, I think, uh, your kind of moral compass, your faith, if you will, and what, what your values are. You know, and, and I think I just really have a hard time with somebody whose whose values incorporate some <clears throat> affirmation that slavery was okay, and that subjugating people and, and discrimination and poverty and things like that along racial lines. I mean, poverty is bad no matter who is experiencing it, but you know, there's no denying. You can look at the, the income level of average white people versus people of color, and it's, it's right there.